Welcome back. So just some quick news and notes. And don't be surprised if as we get into training camp starting for the seven teams that missed the play-in round, uh, they're starting on New Year's Eve. Don't be surprised if there's a bunch of news in between now and then. Um, now, semi-news, Jack Roslovic, who is still without a contract for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, he may end up getting traded. They're they're trying to work out a contract with him. He'll have to do the 14-day quarantine because he's still on the U.S. side of the border right now. Um, which means that it's easier for them to get Perfetti into the lineup right now than Roslovic in all likelihood. We'll see how that works out. Um, so the Jets would like to sign him, but he's been very vocal about not liking his role with the team. So we've discussed this with Liney and, and his probably wanting to get traded and the conversation will always be well that's what happens with Winnipeg but not really you look at Wheeler you look at Shifley you look at Morrissey there's been guys who are willing to sign contracts Hellebuck willing to sign contracts to stay in Winnipeg um, I think it's just a matter of both Line A and Roslovic being in agreement on one thing they think they're being underutilized and as long as they think they're being underutilized they're going to want to probably go somewhere else there's two reasons for that. One, you want to be as prominent as you think you can be for whatever team you're on. You want to be a, a positive factor and you want to make that difference. And two, money. You're going to make a lot more money if you're a first liner on one team than being a third or fourth liner on the other. So for Roslovic, we'll see whether or not the Jets can work this out. As I said, RFA. And we're reaching the point where if it's 14 days before he could make his debut for the Jets, he's got a couple of days to sign. And then after that, it, it becomes more problematic. So yeah, um, Roslovic, I, I would not be surprised to see him get traded. Would not entirely surprise me. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers putting out some, some professional tryouts, and these are interesting in the Devon Shore. Can be a useful fourth liner, 13th forward, you know, member of the taxi squad, certainly. Ryan Stanton, he hasn't been in the NHL in a while, but he is a depth guy. And I'll be interested to see if teams maybe make up their taxi squad with guys like that who are veterans, send their their young prospects down to the American League so they can get the minutes and have have that that taxi squad made up of veteran players that they know they can just throw into the lineup if they need to in the case of injuries, outbreaks, that kind of thing. So Shore and Stanton are on the list for the Oilers. Look for other names, blast from the past as as being on the on the list. Um, now, New Jersey, and New Jersey was in the news, which is good because I finally have the, the green uh, New Jersey Devils reverse retro. So that means there's only one left I don't have, and that's Buffalo. And Ben's supposed to be sending me that one in early, Jan early January. So at that point, then I'll have them all, and then we can do a review of all 31 of them. But um, a couple of notes here regarding the New Jersey Devils. First off, P.K. Subban and Lindsey Vaughn. Uh, have announced that they're they're going their separate ways after a three-year relationship, a year since they got engaged. What I find interesting is the amount of vitriol being thrown at Lindsey Vaughn because people are like, oh, Lindsey, you know, like, she's she's this and that. And I'm thinking, was P.K. Subban a virgin when he met her? It's it's really strange to me how, how, how quickly on social media people will jump on the female in a relationship be like, oh, you know how many guys she's she's dated? Well, how many guy, how many girls do you think a hockey player's gone out with? <laughs> like, I'm laughing because I've known some. And yeah, all right, sure. Okay, all right, stick to that. That's that's fine. All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, Subban and, and Lindsey Vaughn are saying all the right things that, that you want to hear them say, which is that they're still they're still friends and they're still uh, decent, and hopefully that continues. Hopefully this this remains a, a an amicable split. You always want to see that because amicable splits are a heck of a lot easier to deal with. And if you're saying, why is it news? Because Subban and Lindsey Vaughn have kind of been big public figures. And Subban being this giant personality in the National Hockey League, it kind of ends up being news in a way that any other couple separating wouldn't be. But this one kind of is. Uh, Nico Heischer, if you're a Devils fan and you want to hear about the hockey side of the news, the part that's on the ice, Heischer will miss the start of camp. This is being reported by Elliot Friedman. Apparently he hurt his leg in training uh, in early December in Switzerland. And this brings up the point that I made about the Kirby Dock injury. So the Kirby Dock injury at the World Juniors, there have been people saying, see, you can't have players uh, playing in the World Juniors because they're going to get hurt. Well, he sure hurt himself training in Switzerland. So I guess because of injuries suffered during training, guys shouldn't train. Like that's And that's the line I have is that 
I've watched the World Juniors now every game, and other than the freak injury to Doc, nobody else is getting hurt. So it's freak injuries can occur anywhere, and you you other than wrapping these players in bubble wrap, which wouldn't work because you can't skate that way. I don't know how you prevent injuries. There there just there isn't a way to prevent injuries. There's no way to tell when they're going to happen or what's going to happen. So he sure will miss the start of camp. He should be ready to go by the start of the season. It's not supposed to be anything serious. But you have to wonder if he misses part of camp. And remember, we're not getting exhibition games this year. He might get off to a little bit of a slow start. Don't be alarmed. He'll pick it up. So he sure out of training camp. Um, the Panthers uh, have officially made it official that they're going to allow 5,000 fans uh, per game. Uh, I know Dallas is allowing, I think it's 2,000 fans per game. Uh, Arizona is supposed to be allowing fans as well. Tampa's going to allow fans as well. Um, and, and again, it's going to go city by city. And as as this is a hockey channel, it's not up to me to talk about the, the right and the wrong and the... Um, you know whether or not they should or, or or they they you know whether or not they should be able to do this but i'll report on it that yeah these these are going to be cities that have fans in attendance and as we go throughout the season we will see fans in attendance at other games as well it's going to go city by city it's going to be completely different based on which cities you're in and then that's going to throw it's going to throw a wrench into the whole earnings thing because usually Florida is the team that's not generating revenue. And because they'll have the allowance for this many fans, they'll be generating more revenue than some of the others. It's going to be interesting to see what happens from here. But uh, hey, 2020 is almost over. So there you go. Um, so I finally got the jersey that is the most Christmas of the jerseys. And I got it on, on the 29th. It wasn't even on the day that we celebrated Christmas here. We celebrated Christmas here yesterday. So if it had arrived yesterday, I would have been like, well, it's still our Christmas, but um, no, we it, it comes the day after that. So there you go. And I've still got other packages that are lost. And, and this actually passed other packages that seemingly have been lost along the way. So um, again, I've mentioned this in recent videos, if you've made an order and it didn't come in on time, I, I know for our eldest, um, his grandparents in the States, they sent him a bunch of uh, Christmas presents. And of the, I think it's four or five that, that one of the grandparents had sent, I think he'd received one on Christmas Day. So, you know, uh, he got one of the other ones today. They'll eventually show up. It's 2020, so why shouldn't Christmas just be kind of all over the place? I said the whole month, you can treat yourself and Christmas is every day of the month this month. That might be part of the reason why. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video and hey, I know people are going to say 5,000 fans in Florida. That's an improvement for them. I know they're going to say it. So I'm throwing that in the comment at the end and I don't necessarily agree with it. I know Florida fans don't agree with it. And here's to hoping that the Florida Panthers do well and that their fans show up in droves once we're at the level where we can do that. And I'll be here to report on it when it happens. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.